Here are some of my favorite fraction tips. For example, if you have a multiplication table, you can find many equivalent fractions. If I was looking for three-fifths and equivalent fractions, if I look at the multiplication table and I highlight the row for the three and the five, I can now see if I had the fraction nine over 15, I can go back and see that that is equal to three-fifths. Or if I needed to increase that fraction, I can do the same thing in a different row because maybe I needed, let's say I had 56 over 72 and I can go back here and see that that's equal to seven over nine. Another trick I used to show my students was when comparing fractions, sometimes they needed to change the fraction. So if I had three over four and I needed to know what that was if the denominator was 16, our math book used to talk about the backward Z. Well, the problem with the backward Z is the students could never remember the various steps until I realized the bottom line looks like a division. So four, 16 divided by four, four goes into 16 four times. The middle line of the Z looks like a multiplication sign so four times three is 12, and the top looks like an equal sign. The last tip I'm going to show you is for adding fractions with different denominators. So let me clear my screen away. Here we go. If I have the fraction, for example, two fifths, and I need to add it to three eighths, most of the time the students needed to take time finding the least common denominator. However, there's a trick to it. I'm going to show you the trick and then I'll explain why it works. If you take the one denominator times the other denominator, that gives me 40. 8 times 5, 5 times 8 is 40. Now cross multiply the numerator and the denominator, so that'd be 16 and 15 add those together and that equals 31. Now let's look at why that works. I'm going to write out the problem again and I want you to think of this as ice cream. So this is chocolate and this is vanilla and to add them together we need to make a swirl flavor. So if you multiply anything times one, it stays the same. So I need to take some of my vanilla and add it to my chocolate and chocolate to my vanilla. So I'm gonna multiply this times eight over eight because eight over eight equals one. That would give me 16 over 40. Plus, now I need to take some of my chocolate and add it to my vanilla, which would be five over five because five over five equals one. Five goes into five one time. That would give me 15 over 40 and I get my answer of 31 over 40, which is my swirl ice cream.